everyone. I got a request to do um, a series of videos on the force vital capacity. And I thought this is a probably a pretty good topic because nobody really likes PFTs. And we know this loop changes shape, but we're not really sure why. So I'm gonna break this down into two or three videos and we're gonna talk about everything you need to know about the flow volume loop from the MBRC standpoint for your entry level testing, okay? So first of all, let's just look at this loop. What we're doing is we're having the patient take a great big, huge deep breath in, they're blowing it out as hard and as long as they can, and then they're breathing in deeply again, all right? And when they do that, we are measuring the flow, and the flow is on this vertical axis, and we're actually comparing it to the volume that is on this horizontal axis, okay? So let's just talk about volumes first. Take a great big, huge, deep breath in, like you're the patient, okay? That is right here on this graph. This is the point of TLC. When you take a great big, huge, deep breath in, you have TLC in your lungs, okay? So this is TLC. We have that patient blast that air out as hard and fast as, as long as they can until they can't blow anything else out, okay? When they can't blow anything else out, that's where we are, and what's in the chest is residual volume. So this is TLC. They blow down to RV, and what's what they've blown out, this area right here, is the forced vital capacity. All right? Those are all the volumes that this is showing. All right? Now let's go back and let's talk. Well, I'm just going to leave that on there. We're going to talk about flows now. All right? Let that patient take a great big, huge, deep breath in. We start at TLC, and then we're going to have them blow as hard as they can, blast it out of their chest. This first flow that is measured right up here, and we come over and measure it on the graph right here, that is the peak expiratory flow, or peak expiratory flow rate, PEFR. That tells us about flows coming immediately out of the really large airways, okay? As that patient continues to exhale now, we're gonna have a point on the graph, it's not drawn here, so I'm gonna draw it. We have a point on the graph here that is called the FEF 25. Now, 25%. Don't make this hard. This stands for the forced expiratory flow when 25% of the volume is blown out of the chest. Okay, and so you find it, you come over here and you measure that flow on that vertical axis, all right? As the patient continues to blow, when they have 50% of their air out, that's the FEF 50. And you bring this over and you measure it right there. Then there is the FEF 75. With forced expiratory flow, when 75% of their volume has been pushed out of their airway. Okay, that's super simple, there it is. You follow it over and you measure it right here. So, really these flows are super, super important, especially in COPD. This tells us how the air is exiting the airway and where the problem potentially is, okay? And we'll get more into that on the next video. But then when they've blown everything out, remember they take that great big, huge deep breath back in, closing the loop, and what we have right here is the peak inspiratory flow. So the FEF flows tell us about something called the effort independent portion of the loop. We're gonna get into that with the next video. The peak flow, in, the peak expiratory flow and the peak inspiratory flow can help us decide if there is an intrathoracic or an extrathoracic obstruction or maybe there will be a fixed obstruction, okay? And we'll get that into that in the probably third video. So these are the simple components of the flow volume loop. Stay tuned, the next, the next video we will talk about the effort independent portion of this loop. See you soon.